Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Loved, protected, and safe, I hope. Today's words of encouragement from God are about pride and boastfulness. God hates the proud and those who boast in anything except himself and his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Both protected, both pride and boastfulness come before the fall of everyone. God does not give anything to anyone such as these except destruction and ruin. Those who live in this manner are subject to eternal death by their actionable ways of living for their will, for their lives. Those who put away such iniquity with will boast of God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They are not prideful before the Lord Almighty and will inherit the kingdom of God and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior with eternal life by living humbly in the will of God. Now, let's get into the scriptures. First is Proverbs 16, 14 through 20 and 25. The wrath of a king is like a messenger of death, but a wise man will appease it. In the light of the king's face is life, and his favor is like a cloud bringing the spring rain. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding is to be chosen above silver. The highway of the upright turns away and departs from evil. He who guards his way protects his life, his soul. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. It is better to be a humble in spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud, haughty and arrogant. He who pays attention to the word of God will find good. And blessed, happy, prosperous, to be admired is he who trusts confidently in the Lord. There is a way which seems right to a man and appears straight before him, but its end is the way of death. Proverbs 11, 1 through 8, 18 through 21, 23, 27, and 28, 30, and 31. A false balance and dishonest business practices are extremely offensive to the Lord, but an accurate scale is his delight. When pride comes, boiling up with an arrogant attitude of self importance, then come dishonor and shame. But with, with the humble, the teachable who have been chiseled by trial and who have learned to walk humbly with God, there is wisdom and soundness of mind. The integrity and moral courage of the upright will guide them, but the crookedness of the treacherous will destroy them. Riches will not provide security in the day of wrath and judgment, but righteousness rescues from death. The righteousness of the blameless will smooth their way and keep it straight, but the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright will rescue them, but the treacherous will be caught by their own greed. When the wicked man dies, his expectation will perish, and the hope of godless strong men perishes. The righteous is rescued from trouble, and the wicked takes his place. The wicked man earns deceptive wages, but he who sows righteousness and lives his life with integrity will have a true reward that is both permanent and satisfying. He who is steadfast in righteousness attains life, but he who pursues evil attains his own death. The perverse in heart are repulsive and shamefully vile to the Lord. But those who are blameless and above reproach in their walk are his delight. Assuredly, the evil man will not go unpunished, but the descendants of the righteous will be freed. The desire of the righteous brings only good, but the expectation of the wicked brings wrath. He who diligently seeks good seeks favor and grace, but he who seeks evil, evil will come to him. He who leans and trusts in and is confident in his riches will fall. But the righteous who trust in God's provision will flourish like a green leaf. The fruit of the consistently righteous is a tree of life, and he who is wise captures and wins souls for God. He gathers them for eternity. If the righteous will be rewarded on the earth with godly blessings, how much more will the wicked and the sinner be repaid with punishment? Proverbs 13.10 through pride and presumption come nothing but strife, but skillful and godly wisdom is with those who welcome well-advised counsel. Proverbs 29, 23. A man's pride and sense of self-importance will bring him down, but he who has a humble spirit will obtain honor. James 4, 6. But he gives us more and more grace through the power of the Holy Spirit to defy sin and live an obedient life that reflects both our faith and our gratitude for our salvation. Therefore it says, God is opposed to the proud and haughty, but continually gives the gift of grace to the humble who turn away from self-righteousness. Romans 12.3 For by the grace of God given to me, I say to every one of you, not to think more highly of himself and of his importance and ability than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has apportioned to each a degree of faith and a purpose designed for service. Proverbs 18.12 
Before disaster, the heart of a man is haughty and filled with self-importance, but humility comes before honor. Philippians 2, 1 through 18. Therefore, if there is any encouragement and comfort in Christ, as there certainly is in abundance, if there is any con consolation of love, if there is any fellowship that we share in the Spirit, if there is any great depth of affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, having the same love toward one another, knit together in spirit, intent on one purpose, and living a life that reflects your faith and spreads the gospel, the good news regarding salvation through faith in Christ. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, through factional motives or strife, but with an attitude of humility, bring, being neither arrogant nor self-righteous. Regard others as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this same attitude in yourselves which was in Christ Jesus. Look to him as your example in selfless humility, who, although he existed in the form and unchanging essence of God as one with him, possessing the fullness of all the divine attributes, the entire nature of deity, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped or asserted, as if he did not already possess it or was afraid of losing it, but emptied himself without renouncing or diminishing his deity, but only temporarily giving up the outward expression of divine equality and his rightful dignity by assuming the form of a bondservant. And being made in the likeness of men, he became completely human, but was without sin, being fully God and fully man. After he was found in terms of his outward appearance as a man for a divinely appointed time, he humbled himself still further by becoming obedient to the Father to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also, because he obeyed and so completely humbled himself, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in submission of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess and openly acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, Sovereign God, to the glory of God the Father. So then, my dear ones, just as you have always obeyed my instructions with enthusiasm, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation, that is, cultivate it, bring it to full effect, actively pursue spiritual maturity with awe-inspired fear and trembling, using serious caution and critical self-evaluation to avoid anything that might offend God or discredit the name of Christ. For it is not your strength, but it is God who is effectively at work in you, both to will and to work, that is, strengthening, energizing, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose. For his good pleasure, do everything without murmuring or questioning the providence of God, so that you may prove yourselves to be blameless and guileless, innocent and uncontaminated, children of God without blemish in the midst of a morally crooked and spiritually perverted generation, among whom you are seen as bright lights, beacons shining out clearly in the world of darkness, holding out and offering to everyone the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I will have, no, I will have reason to rejoice greatly, because I did not run my race in vain, nor labor without result. But even if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, for preaching the message of salvation, still I rejoice and share my joy with you all. You too rejoice in the same way and share your joy with me. 1 Peter 5 6 Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, set aside self-righteous pride, so that he may exalt you to a place of honor in his service at the appropriate time. 1 John 2 15 Do not love the world of sin that opposes God in his precepts, nor the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Romans 12.16 Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, conceited, self-important, exclusive, but associate with the humble people, those with a realistic self-view. Do not overestimate yourself. Proverbs 8.13.14.17-23, 32-36 The reverent fear and worshipful awe of the Lord includes the hatred of evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverted mouth I hate. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding. Power and strength are mine. I love those who love me, and those who seek me early and diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me. Enduring wealth and righteousness, right standing with God. My fruit is better than gold, even pure gold, and my yield is better than the choicest silver. I, wisdom, continuously walk in the way of righteousness, in the midst of the paths of justice. 
that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth and true riches, and that I may fill their treasuries. The Lord created and possessed me at the beginning of his way, before his works of old were accomplished. From everlasting I was established and ordained, from the beginning before the earth existed. I, godly wisdom, existed. Now, therefore, O sons, listen to me. For blessed, happy, prosperous, to be admired are those who keep my ways. Heed, pay attention to instruction, and be wise, and do not ignore or neglect it. Blessed, happy, prosperous, to be admired is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at my doorposts. For whoever finds me, wisdom, finds life, and obtains favor and grace from the Lord. But he who fails to find me, or sins against me, injures himself. All those who hate me, love and court death. 1 John 2, 16 through 29 for all that is in the world, the lust and central craving of, sensual craving of the flesh, and the lust and longing of eyes, and the boastful pride of life, pretentious confidence in one's resources, or in the stability of earthly things, these do not come from the Father, but are from the world. The world is passing away, and with it its lust, the shameful pursuits and ungodly longings. But the one who does the will of, the God, of God and carries out his purposes lives forever. Children, it is the last hour, the end of this age. And just as you heard that the Antichrist is coming, the one who will oppose Christ and attempt to replace him, even now many Antichrists, false teachers, have appeared, which confirms our belief that it is the last hour. They went out from us, seeming at first to be Christians, but they were not really of us, because they were not truly born again and spiritually transformed. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. But they went out teaching false doctrine, so that it would be clearly shown that none of them are of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have been set apart, specially gifted and prepared by the Holy Spirit. And all of you know the truth because he teaches us, illuminates our minds, and guards us from error. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it, and because no lie, nothing false, no deception is of the truth. Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed? This is the Antichrist, the enemy and antagonist of Christ, the one who denies and consistently refuses to acknowledge the Father and the Son. Whoever denies and repudiates the Son does not have the Father. The one who confesses and acknowledges the Son has the Father also. As for you, let that remain in you, keeping in your hearts that message of salvation which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning remains in you, you too will remain in the Son and in the Father forever. This is the promise which he himself promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you with reference to those who are trying to deceive you, seducing you and leading you away from the truth and sound doctrine. As for you, the anointing, the special gift, the preparation which you received from him remains permanently in you, and you have no need for anyone to teach you. But just as his anointing teaches you, giving you insight through the presence of the Holy Spirit about all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just as his anointing has taught you, you must remain in him, being rooted in him, knit to him. Now, little children, believers and dear ones, remain in him with unwavering faith, so that when he appears as at his return, we may have perfect confidence and not be ashamed and shrink away from him at his coming. If you know that he is absolutely righteous, you know for certain that everyone who practices righteousness, doing what is right and conforming to God's will, has been born of him. There is only one way to the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Their teachings lead us in the only path to eternal life in their kingdom, and those who do not follow their commands, laws, ways, words, and truth with repentance of their sinful way of living and asking for forgiveness of their sins will fall to eternal damnation. I have been on both sides of this doctrine, and I will attest to the truth of their gospel and the consequences of living both in sin and in their righteousness. While living in my own willful, will, will, full of pride and boastfulness, I did attain things, but they were always fleeting, followed by much strife, hate, anger, confusion, and suffering. However, when I finally gave everything to God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I gained so much more than I thought I ever could, and these blessings from God are innumerable, unsurpassed, and as long as you follow their commands, laws, ways, words, and truth, these blessings will always be with you, never fleeting from your presence. Yes, you will still have suffering. However, you will have peace, calm, and strength unsurpassed by our understanding in every storm. Suffering is needed to keep us rooted in God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's commands, 
laws, ways, words, and truth. It is what builds our faith and trust in them for all things we endure. Yes, once you have salvation from God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you always have it. However, eternal life in their kingdom is contingent on following their commands, laws, ways, words, and truth. But first seek the kingdom of God and all things will be added onto your life, including eternal life in their kingdom. Remember, never give up. Never give in. You are more than a conqueror in Christ. And no weapons formed against you will ever prosper. Always keeping God's will for your life and his will will keep you forever protected, provided for, and will lead you to all truth. Remember, God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the angels and I love you all without question or reservation. May God's love, peace, grace, blessings, joy, mercy, understanding, compassion, caring, kindness, patience, wisdom, protection, guidance, glory, goodness, corrections, truth and trust, favor and anointing, faithfulness and steadfastness, forgiveness and salvation, strength, endurance, clarity, courage, calm in every situation, and everything good of them be with you, always guiding you through. Have a blessed day in God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I love you all, and I'll see you later.